Before starting experiments on the incandescent electric light system, many memorandums were drawn up as to a general system that would permit of the subdivision of the lights into small units analogous to gas jets and with commercial economy superior to the prevailing gas system. The result was that if it was to be successful, all the units must be worked in multiple arts. This necessitated the creation of lamps of very high resistance to diminish the enormous investment in copper necessary if low resistance lamps were to be used. The necessity, this necessitated a very fine hair-like filament of the uh, resistance material. On October 21st, 1871, numerous experiments resulted in the production of a small unit lamp of comparatively enormous resistance. The filament being under conditions of great stability, after the result, I knew the problem approached commercial solution. While these lamp experiments continued, other parts of the general system was actively experimented upon. The dynamo, as then in vogue, was extremely in inefficient. The laws approaching 50% due to some misunderstanding among electricians which I never comprehended. However, this, these experiments produced a dynamo of which 90% of the energy was useful. Then meters for measuring the current were used by thousands of customers and, and also a host of accessories like underground conduits, switches, sockets, etc., were necessary to make a complete system of distribution, all of which was accomplished. After the installation of the first station in New York, other improvements were added, such as the three-wire system, which reduced the copper re uh, conductor requirements more than 50%. After this, many central distributing stations were introduced. In the days, I had a high opinion of the system, but I did not realize the stupendous electrical industry of today. Naturally, I am gratified to feel that I have been privileged to play a part in this vast achievement. I am proud of electrical industry, of its vision, courage, zeal, and devotion to the public service and well, I suspect every American feels the same way about it. It is a great reward for me and my colleagues and co-workers, many of them still living, that we have survived to see the fruits of our labors. The record is wonderful, but fine as it is, it can be made still better, and I have a feeling that in your hands it will be. the long, arduous endeavor of a man to conquer and harness the forces of nature. Many days Mr. Edison has spent here without sleep or food as he wrestled with the problems of physics and chemistry. And to him has gone the wreath of victory which so many strive for, but few attain. You, my friends of the National Electric Light Association, has come to San Francisco and to you and to you, my friends of the World Power Conference assembled in Berlin. I rejoice in the wonderful advance that has been made in the art of electrical communication. You and I are very widely separated physically by a great distance in miles, but time and space have been annihilated for us and our minds meet and speech is instantaneous. Thus I enjoy the pleasant privilege of saluting you in person and of extending to each one of you a friendly and cordial greeting. I rejoice in the wonderful advance that has been made in the art of electrical communication. You and I are very widely separated physically 
by a great distance in miles. But time and space have been annihilated for us, and our minds meet and speech is instantaneous. Thus I enjoy the pleasant privilege of saluting you in person and of extending to each one of you a friendly and cordial greeting. The meetings you are now attending have a significant importance to a world which is ever looking for further advancement in its comforts and conveniences arising from improvements in the methods of generation and distribution of electricity for light, heat, and power. Your problem will be numerous, but I have no doubt of their successful solution. I have been deeply impressed in observing the magnificent Portions to which electrical development has attained. This wonderful culmination has been achieved through the labors of many men of many minds in the 50 years that has elapsed since the unprecedented but effectual foundation was laid for the broad system of electric, light, heat, and power. I thank you and hope that still greater successes may reward your labors. Thank you, sir.